to uh, you know to lawsuits or, or or by theft. And so what's really interesting is 20 years down the road, you realize there's a way. Uh, the one constant is you know it, it's just it's just what what gives you stress. So I'm you know I'm not worried about the the Wi-Fi bill, or I'm not worried that uh, you know I have utilities for for four different homes that I keep, but uh, I have a whole different type of anxiety. And and so the same skill set that's required to make a million bucks to make $10 million, to make $100 million is the same skill set that you need to protect uh, those things and to, you know, you start thinking about legacy and longevity. And so uh, I, I like, I, I love a group like this because it creates uh, a platform for, um, for, for discussing these kinds of things because there's tons of platforms for, you know, how do you buy a mobile home? How do you flip? But but um, a group like this gives you the chance to kind of go take a deeper dive into these kinds of things. Well, also, I've, I've learned from being around you enough that it's not and this is this is eight and nine figure thinkers. Right. It's not the strategy. It's not the thing you guys think differently. Like your thinking is what kind of got you where you are and what you're doing. It wasn't the other way around. You didn't start thinking creatively after you were making a lot of money. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, Right. And it's, you know, like this morning I was getting ready and um, I'm in between travel. I really don't have much going on this week. I had maybe two hours worth of work and I found myself rushing to get to the gym. And then I spent, uh, you know, full two hours working out because I had the time. But then I was I felt I was I was getting ready and I was rushing to get ready. And I'm like, what am I rushing for? Hmm. And when you build that sense of urgency into everything that you do, then then you you know, I, 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 and then like three hours later, I'm sitting in front of my computer waiting for emails to come in thinking, all right, what other projects can I work on? And when you've reprogrammed your brain to to attack hard things and, and then you don't have them, you're, you're kind of like, well, I guess I should go home now. It's time to leave the office. You know, it's a different yeah. it's a different mindset. Yeah. Well, and don't you don't you feel like. um you have, you know, it's not about getting to a destination. You're driven by those same goals and things to get you where, where when you were a teacher and you were trying to push yourself to the next level, now you're at a, an area, you're pushing yourself to the next level. It's really not that destination, right? I mean, it's always your mindset pushing you. No, it, that's, that's the, like the French call, that's the joie de vie. That's the joy of life. I mean, you know, when, uh, when I was at high school, I remember getting to the school at 6 a.m. so I could work out with uh, some of the other coaches and running around the track and uh, doing the same thing now because I have a long travel day. That that doesn't change. You know, excellence is a habit that you you know how you do anything is how you do everything, and it doesn't it's it doesn't you, you can't just be like I'm I'm exceptionally good at making money, but my diet sucks and I'm I'm a fat piece of crap. You tend to find that people it it it, it bleeds into all aspects of their life, their money, their family, their you know their 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 their, their personal health, and you know it's like you and I have, are always talking about. The battle to stay healthy in your 40s, you know, that's yeah. a that's a daily grind, man. Yeah. So what you're saying is, guys like you actually are like guys like us that still have to work out and still have to like put your <laughs> pants on one leg at a time. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure. Well, so so let me ask you this: what what do you think are a couple of the keys you specifically? Because a lot of people have different talents, but what do you think are a couple of your unique abilities or keys to the success that's kind of taken you along the path? And then we can use that to lead into kind of some seven figure mindset stuff. But you specifically, what do you think's really helped you get to where you're at? So um, learning to be dumb enough to just do things, you know, um, to, to I remember be, being so scared to buy an apartment complex because I'd never owned one. And the only way to learn how to own an apartment complex is to buy one. And uh, having W-2 employees is intimidating. You just need to hire one. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm working on a, um, a storage unit development right now. And I don't want to run the numbers. I just want to find one and do it and get it going because that's the only way I've ever learned anything. And so when, when I, bring, you know, I was in Indianapolis brainstorming with some of my employees last week and they had some ideas. And I'm like, yes, yes, let's just do that. Let's just do it because as we fail forward, we'll figure it out. And that's a hard thing to do when you're coming from an analytical educational background or when you're coming from a corporate environment where nothing happens without three meetings and, and voting on resolutions. But uh, at a very personal level, you know, it was like I had never ridden a bike and then I hurt my foot running a marathon last year. And so now I, I bought the biker shorts and I got the sores and now I like riding a bike because, I, you know, it's just instead of working into it, you just do it. You know, I think that's critical. And 
we, we, too, too many of us spend so much time thinking about how we're going to do something instead of just jumping in and trying it. Do you think that's a bit of your personality? Because I also see that there's a lot of that in successful people. They they don't overanalyze things. They don't fear so much. They just they just act, right? They just act. But your personality is a little easier sometimes to go with, or or is it that you you've just made that decision? I'm I'm going to say yes, and and then I'm going to figure it out. You know, once you start doing it, it just it just it, it bleeds into everything. And um, I think. Uh, um, Yes, it's important to to get some education at a seminar or from a book or from hearing something, but then it's just as important to plug that in and do that. And it's, you know, I, I, I approached you a couple of months ago and I said, hey, George, you know, you have a network that I don't have of, of people that I don't know and I want to try something. And you're like, okay, here's a guy. And I called the guy and, and now, I'm, now we're moving forward. And we were just talking about it the other day. And, you know, a lot of people have been talking about uh, doing that. And, and and building that part of their business. And I'm just like, I'm just gonna try it. I'm just gonna figure it out and then I'll let you know how it went. And then I'm gonna try it again. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna make money or if I'm gonna lose money, but I know after trying it three or four times, I'm gonna know a lot better. You know what's fun is it's, I've noticed this about you in particular, and I'm talking about out of a lot of successful people that I know, that you, you're, you, you've, it's a habit for you. Ma saying yes and moving forward, not just a habit, but I've seen you with your people in your office and in your organization. You teach that same thing where I could see you in a brainstorming, brainstorming session say, whoa, whoa, like let's stop talking about it and try it. Let's just do it. Yeah. But you also, um, there's a confidence in a, and, and, and do you think that for a lot of people that have this fear, I mean, it is a process, right? It's going to take the more they, they do and make it a habit that the less fear they're going to have, the less they think about it. Or is it, you just got to make the decision and, and bite the bullet. Well, I, I, number one, I have the confidence that, that I'm going to fail at some part of it. And so mm. I don't, I'm not afraid of that anymore because I also have the confidence that I'll just keep tweaking things until I figure it out because I've been doing that you know, for 20 years. And so it's having the confidence that you won't give up, uh, that, that inner confidence in yourself that you know that you'll just keep keep grinding and keep keep tweaking. I love what you just said. You said you have the confidence that you know you're gonna fail. So that's out of the way. Now it's like, just be confident you're not gonna stop. You're just gonna keep tweaking it. And I noticed it with some of the things that you do with your organization, even in a marketing. It's one thing to say, I have the confidence, I know I'm gonna fail and things like that, but you truly believe that it's through that failure that you're gonna get the answers you need to move forward, right? You know, for, for a perfect example, so last week I'm in Indianapolis, we managed in 1600 properties. We have 100,000 to $200,000 a month in maintenance calls that come in on these properties we're managing. And for years I had this belief that you don't hire a W-2 maintenance guy because he'll be lazy. You pay him by the job, you pay him piecework. Well, that worked up to about a thousand properties, but now we're paying so much. I'm making some piecework contractor rich. Like, he, uh, you know, I realized I paid one of my guys like, you know, a million bucks last year. And I was like, well, I, I need W-2 guys. And so six months ago, I said to my team, guys, we got to get some W-2 guys in here. We're losing money on this piecework by the job 10 9 structure. And they're like, oh yeah, we've tried this. And and literally we sat there, I'm like, no, I want you to try this and I want you to do this and I want you to think of this and I want you to go ask this guy this. And um, I said, from a rainmaker standpoint, from a big picture standpoint, we have to do this because we just lost $50,000 this month of overpay because we don't, we're not on that structure. So I don't care where we pull them from, let's get some W2 guys in here. In four weeks, we have to have one. And and so um, that's that's the that's the difference. Whereas you know, 20 years in, um, I get mad if if we aren't gambling and moving forward. Where my team in that case was like, well, we're gonna go to some temp companies and some staffing services, and we've interviewed some people. I'm like, stop! I just, just don't tell me what you've done. Just tell me why we don't have someone here working that we're figuring this out. Yeah. So people on this call are obviously at the you know at the the top end of the percentage of the people that are willing to do the work. Do you feel like